Okay, may as well start. Well, thank you for those of you who take a little bit of time away from the lunch break to sit here and eat your sandwich and see a little short uh, intro talk on bite-sized thing on Micronaut data. So uh, I don't know if all of you have my talk before, but I'm Graham Roche, uh, creator of Grails and Micronaut. I work for a fantastic company called Object Computing, which uh, are based out of St. Louis. And uh, we're essentially the home of Grails and Micronaut. And uh, I work full time on open source uh, software, uh, solving problems, building features for Micronaut and Grails. Uh, I'm a Java champion and uh, uh, Oracle Groundbreaker Award winner at some point. And uh, so in this talk, is, uh, we're going to do a little bit of introduction to Micronaut data. Um, and what it is, and a technical overview, and I'll do some demos and take some questions. Um, so, uh, if you look at existing uh, data access solutions for Java, in the, in the um, you have things like, I guess, the most you know the most famous of them over the last ten years are probably Spring Data and GORM, um, and both of these uh, rely quite heavily on reflection <coughs> and runtime proxies, runtime bytecode generation. And um, so if you were at my uh, uh, Micronaut talk earlier, you would have uh, realized that we're tr trying to do everything possible to avoid uh, both the use of reflection and also the use of runtime generated proxies uh, in order to reduce um, memory consumption, improve startup time, and uh, generally make uh, Java memory consumption more efficient. Um, so, um, and you know, in addition to that, if you look at existing solutions like Spring Data and GORM and so forth, uh, they actually have to analyze uh, your classes, your repositories, so you know you typically define uh, you define a repository interface in like Spring Data that has like find by title like a book repository and has find by title. So Spring Data has to go along and has to like reflectively walk the tree of your uh, interface, figure out the methods, mat do some regular expression pattern matching on method signatures, and all of the stuff has to happen at runtime. And of course you can make it lazy. Um, like you can lazy initialize, and but at some point it has to happen, and at some point it has to be cached um, <coughs> somewhere. And um, what typically happens is, as the more more interfaces you have, repository interfaces, uh, the more your um, the cost of this computation grows, and the memory requirements grow as well because you you, know, you have more uh, reflective data caches, you have more methods to analyze, um, more complexity, uh, deeper your interface hierarchy, um, and, and so on. So your, your app, your, as your application code base grows in size, so does your memory requirements and your performance requirements. You know, like you get. So um, <coughs> when we looked at this problem in terms of Micronaut, um, you know, a lot of people were asking us, oh, Micronaut's great, but we really miss like Spring Data or we from a lot of Spring users were saying Spring Data. And then we had like Rails users that were coming to Micronaut and saying, we really miss GORM. Can we not have something similar? And it would probably have been, you know, not probably, no, it would have been technically possible to just like add support for Spring Data. Um, and in fact, we did add support for GORM the, uh, when we do still have support for GORM. Um, but it would be, be kind of like taking, you know, in terms of Micronaut, this system that is reflection free, proxy free, uh, and, you know, putting something that's kind of against the design principles of where the way Micronaut works into Micronaut and just kind of losing all the benefit of Micronaut itself. So, so we looked at the problem and we looked at what else we could do. And uh, one of the things we, we realized is we could actually, instead of doing the computation of the query at runtime, we could actually do the computation of the actual query that you're going to execute on the database at compilation time. 
So uh, Micronaut data is uh, a redesign of how uh, something like Spring Data or GORM works. It pre-computes your queries, so your SQL and your JPA QL queries at compile time, so that, that so that at runtime, there's literally nothing left to do except execute the query. Um, it uses Micronaut's reflection-free AOP, so when uh, you know all it has to do is retrieve the query string, execute the query, and return the results. And you know there's literally zero, pretty much zero runtime overhead. You'd probably struggle to write a more performant query yourself. Um, and uh, in addition to that, because we are doing all of this analysis at compilation time, we can provide a better, better de developer experience than things something like Spring Data by doing more um, compilation time checking, by checking that you're using the tool in the correct way. Um, you also get much smaller stack traces, um, so the, there is not um, these massive um, these massive um, stack traces. Uh, I'll probably just quickly show you that because uh, there's a we did in a when we announced the technology we did a um, uh, I had a nice like example of um, in terms of screenshots. So these four scr screenshots here are um, the stack traces for uh, Micronaut data JDBC. Micronaut data J JPA, and when you're using it with JPA, it's JPA itself uses reflection. Spring Data JPA and Go. So you can see that um, you know with the Micronaut one, you were talking about like 10 stack frames for the entire trace, something like that. Um, and if you look at something like Spring Data, uh, oops, maybe I need to make this bigger. So uh, I don't know how many stack tra frames that is, but it's probably like f 50 or something. I, I don't know. So, and, and you know, when you s and, and you look at um, even co in comparison to the JPA version that for Micronaut, simply by eliminating a lot of stack frames, um, we get better performance and um <coughs> and we get uh, more optimized queries in terms of the kind of performance that we're looking at. Um, the uh, when we were when we announced Micronaut Data, um, the Spring Data guys were went away and they optimized some stuff and came back and said, "Hey, we've we made it a lot better." And um, but even still, uh, Micronaut uh, Data JDBC is 430k ops per second um, in terms of performance on the test hardware that we undertook compared to the JPA implementation of Micronaut Data JPA, which is 140K ops per second, and uh, Spring Data JDBC, which is 275K ops per second for the same dynamic finder, just like find by title. So you can see the overhead uh, that your framework layer adds in terms of operations per second. Uh, so, uh, uh, and we support, in, in the initial version that we've just released, uh, we support JPA, QL, and SQL, pre-computation of queries. Um, how does it look like? Uh, not very dissimilar to the way GORM or Spring Data looks like. You define an interface. You annotate it with um, <coughs> at uh, repository or at JDBC repository if you're using JDBC. So if you're using JDBC, you have to tell it what dialect you, you want to communicate with the database with. <coughs> Uh, so the JDBC implementation is a simple data mapper. It's not an ORM tool. It doesn't support things like lazy loading or uh, runtime proxies or anything like that. It's just simple, I want to map this row onto my entity. So it's, a lot of people like that approach, and it's a lot simpler and a lot easier to understand. Um, and you can see you just define uh, interfaces, and those, uh, those, int those methods get implemented for you at compilation time. At compilation time, we implement those methods, and, and that's it. And um, so uh, and then uh, you can see in the previous example here that we extend uh, CRUD repository. And uh, that means what you can do is you can inject the repository and you can save an entity. You can find one by name, executing that finder. You can update them. You can delete them, basically performing CRUD operations. And it's really simple. 
Um, so let's do a demo so, uh, with my five minutes that remain. So I have an application here and um, presentation mode is what we want. So I have an application here and you can see that um, it's a simple micronode application and we have a repositories directory and we have two repositories. We've got a pet repository which uh, extends page over repository and that's JDBC, a couple of methods. Uh, you can specify join queries if you want by using at join. So if you want to join some data and you can have multiple of these. So if you had a owner.company, you could you know, join across multiple uh, records. And um, uh, so this is going to query the pet. And then we have another repository here, which is, I don't know why that error is popping up there, um, which is for the owner. Um, and uh, the, the net result of this, you know, doing all this work at um, a compilation time is that when, uh, when I, you know, run my, uh, run a method that's going to exercise my repository, uh, you can see that the um, the startup, the execution of my test is instantaneous. Um, there's no like waiting around for my data access tool to compute the mappings between the tables and the columns and the, the initialization of something like JPA because it's already initialized. It's already computed at compile time, so it's literally just getting the query and executing it. Um, and you know, even the things like the um, Really, how how the object is mapped from a, a row into into an object. So when you read an object from from the database from from a database row, it has to um, you know instantiate that object. It has to dynamically set all the properties of the object from the row. Those mappings are computed at compile time, and the object that reads and writes its properties is computed at compilation time as well. So there's no reflection when you actually read the object from the database. Um, and the other cool thing is, like, if you make any mistakes, so, you know, I'm going find my name here, uh, pet find my name. But if I were, you know, if I tried to say pet find my nom, I have no idea why that keeps popping up. Um, if I did that and try and run the test again, um, you can see that I get a compilation error instead of a runtime error. And at the bottom here, you can see that it's telling you, I'm sorry, I'm unable to implement that repository method because find my nom cannot query p entity pet on non-existent property nom. So you get intelligent compilation time errors instead of like running it and then realizing at runtime that you've misspelled the finder name and trying to introspect this, understand this massive stack trace where you know what exactly went wrong. You get the application fails, fails fast um, and you get a nice uh, compilation error. And this is not dependent on like what ID you use. So whether I run this application with IntelliJ or Visual Studio Code or uh, Eclipse, I'm going to get the same consistent experience of compilation errors because the ID doesn't have to build like custom extensions to understand this dynamic stuff that I'm doing. Uh, so uh, so yeah, the uh, the. The uh, that's probably all I have time for. So in summary, then that was quick. Some time for Q and A. Um, Micronaut data fits naturally in into Micronaut applications, but you can also use it standalone uh, as a CLI app. Uh, it's it's a, I like to call it think of it as like a zero overhead data access solution because we're not having to uh, compute you know, <laughs> do any analysis on your classes, use any reflection, uh, introspect your your model, figure out mappings between tables, and it all just happens at, at compilation time, so at runtime where all we are doing is executing queries. Um, it, by doing that as well, we reduce memory consumption and improve performance, so the performance of Micronaut data is significantly better in the competition. And it's also natively, uh, natively supports GraalVM native image, um, so, you know, I have a, this application here. If I, if I, uh, if I run it as a, um, as a regular Micronaut application, you'll see that, um, uh, you'll see that, um, the application starts up in just over a second and that, um, you know, I can go to the pets endpoint and I get a list of all my pets and my owners and so forth. So this is interacting with my, with my database. You can see the query log um, appearing there. 
but if I compute it into a native image, which I don't, I'm not going to have time to in a 15-minute talk, um, I, 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 in fact, I'm finished. Uh, you can see that the native image uh, starts up in uh, the native image starts up in 32 milliseconds. Uh, there it is, and it's the same app talking to my database, reading using JDBC to communicate with my database. But in this time, in this time, it's starting up in 32 milliseconds. So that was really a short talk. So uh, qu questions, probably I have time for questions. I guess everybody else is at lunch, so it do doesn't really matter. Q and A. Any thoughts? Nope. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I was challenging cramming that into 15 minutes, but I hope it was of some value. <laughs> thank you.